Small invasion. You heard a version of the story from Obama a couple of nights ago, but there's also reality, not just an <laughs> invention. And it's pretty easy to check. You know, it's not obscure. I mean, you're not going to find it in the front pages, but a little work and you'll dig it out. Uh, so it was supposedly a reaction to 9-11. We had to defend ourselves from terror. Well, let's imagine that protection of the population from terror was a high priority of the government. It's almost unimaginable, but suppose it were true. Well, there were that's some very straightforward ways to proceed. Um, I'm sure there specialists in the State Department could have informed them that uh, the jihadi movement was highly critical of Obama bin Laden. They bitterly condemned 9-11. I mean, there were fatwas coming out from the most radical clerics in Al-Azhar University, you know, the most important university, uh, denouncing Obama bin Laden and so on. So there was a perfect opportunity to split the jihadi movement, isolate Osama bin Laden, and re significantly reduce the threat of terror. <coughs> Instead, they chose to do the opposite, uh, to act in a way which united the jihadi movement. And then invasion, invading Iraq, of course, did so even more. That's one of innumerable examples that protecting the population is not a high priority of this government or governments in general. Uh, so that would have been one reaction. Now, of course, uh, there was a, uh, a serious crime not as serious as 9-11, 1973, but still very serious. Uh, so what do you do when there's a crime? Well, uh, you try to identify the perpetrators, uh, uh, capture them, if it's an international issue, you know, use international forces, no problem in this case, uh, and bring them to trial and have a fair trial. Uh, well, they couldn't do that. They didn't try to do that, and there's a good reason which was explained later on. Uh, eight months after 9-11, the head of the FBI, uh, Robert Mueller, uh, had an interview with the Washington Post in which he told them that uh, we really don't know who was responsible. He says, we believe that the plot was hatched in Afghanistan, but implemented in the United Arab Emirates and uh, Germany. Well, if they only could believe it in April, they didn't know it, the preceding October, uh, which is why they did not respond, presumably. That's the reason why they didn't respond to the Taliban when they, uh, who had made tentative offers to extradite Osama bin Laden, but wanted to see some evidence. Yes, you know, what you do when you ask for extradition. And of course, this was contemptuously rejected. Uh, so we went ahead and bombed. Uh, that's a major war crime. Uh, first of all, there's no there was no international authorization of any kind, totally violated international law, but it was a moral <coughs> war crime in a deeper sense. You have to go back to that time. At that time, there were five, an estimated five million Afghans right at the edge of starvation, and it was predicted that the aid agencies, which all had to flee, uh, warned repeatedly and loudly uh, that uh, if the U.S. bombed, it would put at risk another two and a half million people. Well, you know, fortunately the world worst didn't happen, but that's not the way you estimate uh, the moral character of an action. You estimate it on the basis of likely consequences. So they were willing to take a risk of killing another two, two and a half million Afghans in order to achieve their ends. Well, what were the ends? Not to end terror, plainly. Actually, I think the ends were pretty well described by uh, some of the uh, uh, leading anti-Taliban uh, Afghans, including the U.S. favorite, Abdul Haq, who was later killed, uh, they strongly, strenuously objected to the bombing. Uh, they said the bombing is just killing innocent civilians. It's uh, undermining our efforts to overthrow the Taliban from within, which they thought pretty reasonably could succeed. And you're only doing it because you want to show your muscle and intimidate the world. Uh, and of course, Afghanistan has, unfortunately for Afghans, a strategic location right on the periphery of the major oil producing regions in the <coughs> Middle East and Central Asia and of course South Asia. And that goes way back in history and they've suffered for it. So I pres we don't have documents yet, internal documents, maybe we'll get them someday, <coughs> but it looks as if those were the reasons.
Well, why is it continuing? Well, we don't have documents from today either. Incidentally, uh, you heard the other night that uh, the world supported us uh, in uh, the bombing. Well, you know, that depends very much on how you define the world. Uh, so, for example, if the world includes the people of the world, uh, we know the answer. Um, uh, <laughs> you have to do a little work to find the answer, but it's not really difficult in these internet days, and there are books of mine and others that talk about it. But right after the bombing was announced, but before it started, uh, there was an international Gallup poll uh, all over the world which asked people uh, whether they were in favor of bombing. Now, the question was asked on the assumption uh, that it would be selective. It would go after the uh, perpetrators and those civilians would be attacked, which, of course, was never happened. And on that assumption, there was very little support uh, only two countries had even majority support. Uh, one was India, the other was Israel. But India and Israel, I don't think we're even thinking about Afghanistan. Uh, India was thinking about Kashmir and Israel was thinking about the Palestinians. So yeah, you want to go bomb people, great. That's a bomb Pakistan. <laughs> no bomb. But uh, in every, even in Europe, the numbers were like in the 20, 20 to 30 percentile. But most interesting were the Latin American uh, uh, answers. Latin America had a little bit of experience with U.S. intervention. In Latin America, the figures range, support range from 2% in Mexico, uh, that is the half of Mexico that we didn't conquer, 2% uh, support there it went up to, I think, 11% in Colombia. Uh, and uh, even in Panama, which is practically a U.S. colony, it was like 16% or something. Well, that was the popular support for the bombing on the assumption that it wouldn't hit civilians, which of course it did. Uh, it, well, the, the media cooperated by not reporting it. An uh, international Gallup poll on an issue like that is kind of important, so therefore it's better suppressed. Uh, why are we staying? As I said, we don't have internal documents, but I suspect it's partly the same reasons, the strategic location, so on and so forth. There's probably another factor. It's what uh, Dan Ellsberg called the, uh, what do you call it, the stalemate machine, I think. Uh, when he was writing about uh, U.S. policies in Vietnam through the 60s, he said kind of accurately, I think the documents supported it, that uh, the idea was to just keep it going so you don't lose the next election. Uh, if you wanted to win the war, I mean the, in my opinion, the U.S. actually did win the war in Vietnam, but that's another story. But if you wanted to reach the maximum goals, you would have had to move up to the nuclear warfare or something like that. And to reach the maximal goals here, it's not even clear how you would do that. But you don't want to you know, be attacked as uh, soft, wimpish, not courageous like Theodore Roosevelt and those good guys that we honor. Uh, so it's probably that, the stalemate machine is probably a factor. I mean, the plans that were announced the other day make absolutely no sense on any grounds. But uh, uh, we're not going to suffer from it except paying. Uh, the Afghans will suffer as usual, and the Pakistanis who may be in real trouble if this continues. Okay.